Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome back to my channel the criterion today I'm going to discuss a very important topic and that is the issue of the Quran alone position there are some small group of Muslims who believe that the Quran is sufficient in all matters of the deen in terms of guidance and revelation for Muslims to follow the majority of Muslims feel that um, a separate source known as Sunnah or which is found in hadith books is necessary for Muslims to follow. So today I'm going to be analyzing the first view known as the Quran only position to see if it is defensible. My position now is that the Quran alone position is indefensible and untenable in light of certain verses that I'm going to um, convey today, one of which is Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse 2143 okay and in that verse it says and thus we have made you a just community that you will be witnesses over the people and the messenger will be a witness over you and we did not make the qibla which you used to face except that we might make evident who would follow the messenger from who would turn back on his heels and indeed, it is, di it is difficult except for those whom Allah has guided, and never would Allah have caused you to lose your faith. Indeed, Allah is to the people kind and merciful. Now, why is this verse difficult for Quran-only Muslims to reconcile with their belief? Well, the reason is that the verse specifically mentions that the messenger was on a previous qibla before al-Masjid al-Haram, which is in the second verse, which is in the next verse, in 2.144, which says, Indeed, we see, the, we see the turning of thy face, speaking to the messenger. So we shall surely make thee master of the Qibla, which you likest. Turn then thy face towards the sacred mosque, al-Masjid al-Haram, and wherever you are, turn your faces towards it. But those who have been given the book certainly know that it is the truth from their Lord, and the law is not heedless of what they do. So, the question is, okay, the second Qibla for, that the messenger was supposed to be following, according to 2.144, is al-Masjid al-Haram. Okay? In the previous verse, it says that the messenger was on a previous Qibla. Okay? Now, I'm not going to get bogged down in, ter in the terms of Pibla and Al-Masjid Al-Haram and what exactly these things mean yet. It's not my point yet. Okay, I'm going to get to that a little bit later about Al-Masjid Al-Haram. But, it's clear from 2.143 that the messenger, Rasul, is the word used, was on a previous Qibla before Al-Masjid Al-Haram. And his contemporaries were also. And Allah says the purpose in having the first Qibla and then the second one, okay, was so that we might make evident who would follow the messenger from who would turn back on his heels. So that means he had to be the messenger at the time when he was following the first Qibla. Otherwise, people would not have to follow him to the second Qibla because he wouldn't have authority if he wasn't the messenger at that point. Okay, so now the question is, well, we have a clear verse in 2.144 where it states that the messenger is now and the people are now to follow the new Qibla, al-Masjid al-Haram, but yet, where is the command in the Quran for the messenger and other people to follow the first Qibla, whatever that was? We don't have any such command, okay? Now, it is the position of the majority, or at least the majority of the Qur'an-only Muslims that I know, that they believe that the only wahi, or revelation, that the Messenger received was the Qur'an. So now the question comes, why was he called the Messenger at this time, when he was on the previous Qibla and teaching others to do so? Okay, and secondly... Why was he commanding other people to follow that if he didn't have that command in the Qur'an? We don't see a command in the Qur'an for him to follow this uh, uh, other Qibla, okay? 
So if it's not in the Quran and Allah yet Allah certifies him in following it and the other people to follow it and tells us the reason for why he did that and says he was a messenger, okay, then the question is where is that command? Okay? So Sunnis understand that this verse shows that the messenger must have received other wahi apart from the Quran in which the messenger had access to and warned other people by. Now, this is my understanding as well from the verse. I think that's pretty clear. Okay. Such a view that say that no, the messenger didn't receive any wahi or revelation apart from the Quran. Okay. So, I have a deductive argument for this group of Muslims, which I used to be one of them, that feel that the Qur'an only is the only wahi that the messenger received. Premise one, if the messenger received other wahi apart from the Qur'an, then the Qur'an only position is false. Premise two, the messenger did receive wahi apart from the Qur'an. The proof of that is um, 2.143, which I just went over. Conclusion, therefore the Qur'an only position is false. Now this is only for the Qur'an only uh, Muslims who believe that he didn't receive wahi apart from the Qur'an. It's clear that he did when we see in um, Surah 2 verse 143, okay, that he was following a Qibla previous to al Masjid al-Haram and yet there's no command for him or others to do so in the Qur'an. So where did this uh, information come from? Okay, that's the question for this group of Muslims which they do not have an answer for. That's the question for this group of Muslims which they do not have an answer for. So when pressed, some Qur'an only Muslims say, well yes, he did receive uh, wahi apart from the Qur'an. Now the second question that comes in for the people that say yes is, did the messenger convey this other wahi to other people, to other people around him? Because some may say, well, he received other wahi, whether it was in a dream or something else, but it wasn't meant for other people. Okay, so the question is, did he convey this other wahi that he may have received to other people? Some say yes of this group. That includes Sunni, Shia, and some Qur'an only Muslims, which is even a less of a degree, but I'm going to get back to that point. For now, I'm going to deal with the ones who say no, which is this group of Qur'an only Muslims. Say that no, he, he did receive wahi apart from the Qur'an, but it was only for himself. He didn't use it to warn other people. Well, that again, by the same verse, 2.143, is shown to be false because it says that the messenger was on this previous Qibla, okay? and that other people were following him in doing so, and the new one was made to see who was going to follow him from the first Qibla to the second one. So, if he did get this Wahi, and it was not in the Qur'an, and he was following it, then how were the other people around him following it? Well, it's obvious that he must have used that Wahi to convey to other people, and that's why some people were following him. Peace to salams to all the Quran alone Muslims. Now I'm just going to address yet again another person by the name of Jake, and he used to be a Quran only Muslim, and he's now decided to take on the satanic Zoroastrian man-made Parsi Iranian Shia hadiths uh, and he's become a Sunni he's become a sect he's obviously not part of the Quran alone anymore um, <clears throat> he's obviously going trying to go hard into convincing people to the devilish way in trying his best to try and manipulate and give you the reason why there was a second Wahi revelation 
Now I've got three I've got three ways of trying to address this. Now this is a pretty long video in regards to I just broke it down from his video. I've got a few more to address on this topic. Uh, now it's not an attack as such on this brother or this person, this guy. Um, he's just, you know, coming across like a bit of a know-it-all um, when he was promoting Quran alone before and now he's trying to force and shove this false narrative down people's throats. Now I've done a little bit of digging around myself uh, and yes, you know some of the stuff you might have heard from certain videos but I think it's necessary to mention them here. Um, now, <clears throat> going to start off with the Qibla. Now the traditional understanding of the Qibla is a direction we face during the Salah ritual. But if we read the passage that talks about the Qibla in chapter 2 verse 142 to 150, see God talks about the Qibla but it's ironic that he does not mention the word Salah. So it's ironic that we associate Qibla with Salah here even though God does not mention it. So let's share some understanding about the Qibla. It comes from the root word Kabala, which means being before something and in the presence of it. In the Quran the word Kabala and its various derivatives is used to signify something that is in the presence of something else and being in the presence of it and being before it. For example in chapter 12 verse 71 means to approach something, chapter 5 verse 27, accept something, chapter 69 verse 9, to be before something, chapter 56 verse 16, to meet something. So the idea of Kabbalah is to be before something in the presence of it. So when we talk about the Qibla, God gives us a clear understanding as to what it is, what's the purpose of it, in chapter 10 verse 87. It talks about Moses and God tells Moses to make his home into a Qibla. God was not telling Moses make your home in the direction of prayer. God is telling Moses make your home in a Qibla in the sense of a meeting point, a location. That's all that Qibla means. And that's why it means to be in the presence and to be before something. So Qibla is a meeting point and when we look in chapter 2 verse 142 it says the fools amongst them will ask why did they change their Qibla. They was not asking why they changed direction of prayer, but rather why did they change their direction of a meeting point or location or focal point or where they meet. It has nothing to do with direction of prayer towards something. Now you might respond by asking about chapter 2 verse 149 where it says whether you are wherever you are then you shall turn your face to Masjid al-Haram. In most of the translations so far, there is an overlooked key word here, but before addressing this, let's talk a bit about Masjid al-Haram briefly. Masjid al-Haram, according to the Quran, is simply a place or location that is sacred where you are not allowed to fight or kill humans, and non-humans regardless of your faith or which tribe you're from, whatever. Chapter 9 verse 7, verse 22 and verse 25, we can see this. God talks about Masjid al-Haram, which means the place of submitting to the prohibited laws, this is what it means. So God tells the Prophet, wherever you are, you shall turn your face Shutra, Masjid al-Haram. The key word here is Shutra. So let's explain what Shutra is. If I have a candy bar and you take half of the candy bar and you walk away holding this candy bar, leaving the other half where it is and benefit from this candy bar and you're eating it, this process is called Shutra. Basically, half in something and then you take the benefit from that half, this is Shutra. So when God tells the Prophet, wherever you are, you shall turn your face Shutra, Masjid al-Haram, it does not mean wherever you are, you shall turn your face towards Masjid al-Haram. No, God is telling him, Shutra, take the portion of the benefit of Masjid al-Haram, wherever you go. That means wherever the Prophet went, he wants to carry with him the idea or the notion the impression of Masjid al-Haram 
with him making life sacred wherever he goes. So the idea of turning your face to Masjid al-Haram simply is take a portion of Masjid al-Haram with you, making life sacred wherever you go. So Qibla has nothing to do with the direction of prayer but rather as a meeting location and Shutra, Masjid al-Haram, is simply taking with you wherever you go on earth Masjid al-Haram in the sense of keeping life sacred. And this is just another understanding of chapter 2 verse 142 to 150. Now we go on to the second, the old Qibla. The following ayat are commonly used to say that there was religious commands from Allah that are not in the Quran. Specifically, they say that the command to pray to the Qibla they used to face before they faced the sacred mosque is not found in the Quran while being implied in these ayat. In chapter 2 verse 142 to 145, the fools among the people will say what have turned them from the Qibla, the focal point that they were on. Say to Allah, belong both east and west, he guides whom he will to a straight path and thus we have made you a just community that you will be witnesses over the people and the messenger will be a witness over you and we did not make the Qibla which you used to face except that we might make evident who would follow the messenger from who would turn back on these hills. And indeed it is difficult except for those whom Allah has guided and never would Allah have caused you to lose your faith. Indeed Allah is to the people kind and merciful. We have seen you looking up to the heaven turning this way and that. So we will turn you towards a direction which will please you turn your face. Therefore to a sacred mosque wherever you are, turn your faces towards it. Those give them the book, know it is the truth from their Lord. Allah is not unaware of what they do and if you brought to those who were given the scripture every sign they would not follow your Qibla, your focal point nor will you be a follower of their Qibla, their focal point nor would they be followers of one another's Qibla so if you were to follow their desires after that after what has come to you of knowledge indeed you would then be among the wrongdoers now the part where it says that you will be witnesses over the people and the messenger will be a witness over you and we did not make Allah is stating that he did not make it so not that he did not command reveal inspire it so the Muslims themselves choosing the old Qibla fits into the word usage here potentially with Allah making circumstances such that their choice was a foregone conclusion however the old Qibla whatever it was was not the right one ultimately so it is not in the revelation so whatever he was using as his Qibla was not from Allah's revelation so what other revelation the only so-called revelation you could be referring to Jake is the Wahi of Satan and this is what you refer to in order to clarify the satanic man-made Zoroastrian Shia hadiths the um, change in the direction of the Qibla, it was to test the followers of the Messenger. We must keep in mind that it is only it is Allah who makes all things happen, as without Him nothing happens. Now we go to the next part where it says the Qibla which used to face except that we might make evident who would follow the Messenger from who would turn back on these hills. These would mostly like the, these would most likely have been referring to Jewish and Christian converts more so than the other followers of the messenger as they would have had their own Qibla, their focal point from before. Turning back on their heels may refer to those converts from Judaism and Christianity returning to their previous way or their Qibla, their focal point. The messenger and his followers took the Qibla, they did because they did not know better, they had no guidance whatever the case the circumstances that led to their choice was made by Allah we must keep in mind that it is Allah who makes all things happen as without him nothing happens so we go on to the next one and it's except for those whom Allah has guided and never would Allah have caused you to lose your faith indeed Allah is to the people kind and merciful we have seen you looking up to the heavens turn in this way and that 
The fact that the messenger was looking around proves that Allah did not reveal inspire to the messenger a Qibla, a focal point before this. If Allah had commanded that they, messenger included, pray to a Qibla before, we would assume that the messenger would submit absolutely instead of hoping and seeking for another direction. Unfortunately in the Hadith, we have examples of the messenger not submitting. Now when I talk Hadith, man-made Hadith, Zoroastrian Hadith. We have examples of the messenger not submitting to the command of Allah immediately and rather questioning or haggling for example in relation to the forged made up Zoroastrian 50 prayer hype. For this reason the proponents of Hadith have no problem assuming that the messenger was acting unhappy with the Qibla, the focal point, after they believe he was commanded by Allah to follow it. Now we go on to the next the next angle that I want to take this. In chapter 2 verse 142, the foolish from among the people will say what has turned them away from the focal point, the Qibla, that they were on. Say to God is the east and the west, he guides whomever, whosoever he wishes to a straight path. Whereas Qibla can mean focus or direction or general course, and such a reading fits the context, the traditionalists insert and insist upon a highly subjective, specialised and cultic value for Qibla, that of direction of prayer. This value is not sustained by Quranic usage, and context rather is uh, antagonistic to both, for example, what directly follows talks of guidance and a straight path, both of which are general moral, not physical concepts. Yet the traditionalist claims Qibla to have a highly specific and physical connotation. Here and in the verses which follow, Bowen is nowhere mentioned and the traditionalist cannot even point to his value for Salah. Rather the context dismisses adherence to assumption and dogma in chapter 2 verse 140 and emphasises the importance of individual responsibility over merits of group membership or president. Chapter 2 verse 141. In the you know, in the only other context in which it occurs in chapter 10 verse 87, the Qibla can only sensibly mean focus, purpose, goal, course or direction, that to which one directs one's attention which are acceptable values for the term, and is often rendered there along those lines by the traditionalists. I stand by my principle on not allowing subjective specialised values to supp to um, supplant uh, established common meanings and render Qibla have here accordingly has course um, it is true historic obviously historic historically that Muslims have built places of worship and it is true that they face a number of directions and that each instance of such a direction is today called a Qibla these facts are not in question the question is whether such a value can be ascribed to the Quran the Quran's use of the word and on the basis of its contents and context it cannot so the people who received the previous scripture who thought God's scripture is only revealed to certain chosen people asked what had made the Arabs change their focus of belief from paganism to God's deen. Chapter 2 verse 143 And as such we have made you a balanced nation so that you may be witness over the people and that the messenger may be witness over you and we did not make the focal point that you came on except that we may know who is following the messenger from those who will turn on their heels. It was a great thing indeed, except for those whom God had guided. God was not to waste your belief. God is merciful and compassionate over the people. So according to the Quran, then this is the purpose we are to fulfill, to pass on what the messenger brought to mankind. Religion, in terms of dogma and right, is absent throughout. Chapter 2 verse 144, we see the shifting of your face in the heaven, we will set for you a focal point that will be pleasing to you, you shall set your face towards the restricted temple and wherever you may be, you shall all set your faces towards it. Those who have been given the book know it's the truth from their Lord and God is not unaware of what you do. The place known as Masjid al-Haram denotes a physical precinct to which Arab tribes perform the pilgrimage to worship, to visit and bury their dead, to trade and to meet and to talk. That location was not at Mecca, but rather at Petra in modern day Jordan. There is no further obligation connected with al-Masjid al-Haram since the Quran clearly indicates the end of its use in chapter 9 verse 28. The focus upon that place was the obligation upon the messenger for the duration of his mission. However, that mission is now closed. 
chapter 2 verse 141. Today's narration simply represents one of the many historical lessons found within the Quran, the delivery and pre preservation of which was the Messenger's broader task. The call to monotheism and repentance which was the principal task of the Messenger at al-Masjid al-Quran and is the obligation of all those in possession of the law. Chapter 3 verse 187. Now Masjid al-Haram. The religionists claim the last prophet was commanded to change the direction of his made up five daily prayers from Jerusalem to Mecca. An important point to remember is at the time the reading was revealed there was no physical mosque anywhere around the world, not even in Jerusalem. To say the meaning of the word Masjid al-Haram is a reference to a physical sacred mosque is a lie. Because there was no such thing as a sacred mosque referred to in the reading, the word Harami appended to the word masjid was deliberately distorted by the religionists to become sacred. No Arabic scholar can explain how the word masjid al haram could be translated to sacred mosque. Haram literally means deprived or forbidden and the correct word for sacred in Arabic is Qudus. The Arab race was following their forefathers religion and the Arabs did not comprehend either Islam or the revelation. The reading says they were very hostile towards the revelation and hostility which is common even among the present day Muslims who are shackled by the Arab religion. Those who received the previous scripture recognized these consented decrees as the truth from their Lord. A mosque cannot be a truth of any kind. Chapter 2 verse 145 And if you come to those who have been given the book with every sign they will not follow your focal point nor will you follow their focal point nor will some of them even follow each other's focal point and if you were to follow their desires after the knowledge that has come to you then you would be one of the wicked. In chapter 2 verse 146 those to whom we have given the book know it as, know it as they know their own children and a group of them hides the truth while they know. So that is, they recognised sanctions just as they recognised their own children. Why? Because they had consented similar sanctions. The fact that they largely chose to ignore its content is a different matter. In chapter 2 verse 147, the truth is from your Lord so do not be one of those who doubt. God assures us that the sanctions in the consented decree are the truth. There was no such thing as sacred or profane mosque at the time when the reading was revealed. Chapter 2 verse 148 And to each is a direction that he will take so you shall race towards good deeds wherever you may be. God will bring you all together. God is capable of all things. This is the Quranic model for establishing a Quranic community. Obey the imperatives one finds in the Quran and others will be drawn to you. Chapter 2 verse 149 And from wherever you go out you shall set your face towards a restricted temple. It is the truth from your Lord and God is not unaware of what you do. Chapter 2 verse 150 And from wherever you go out you shall set your face towards a restricted temple and wherever you may be you shall all set your faces towards it that the people will have no room for debate with you except those of them who are wicked. You shall not be concerned by them but be concerned by me so that I may complete my blessings upon you and that you may be guided. Chapter 2 verse 151 As we have sent a messenger to you from among yourselves to recite our revelations to you and purify and teach you the book and the wisdom and teach you what you did not know. A messenger by definition is one who brings a message. In the case of Muhammad, the law and wisdom and teachings, he was given form a, a, a part of his message. The message given to Muhammad is the Quran. Whatever is said about him by others and ascribed to Muhammad which does not find direct and an unambiguous purchase in the Quran is not part of that message he was given. In chapter 2 verse 152 So remember me that I may remember you and be thankful to me and do not disbelieve. Not only bear in mind but bear witness to the message of God and keep his laws. In chapter 2 verse 142 to 150 describes a changing recipients of the revelation from the people who received the previous scripture, the children of Israel, to the people of the Arab prophet, the Masjid al-Haram, is nothing but a recitation. Check chapter 2 verse 151 to 152. A key point for those sincere people who are looking for the grace and the pleasure of their Lord is to remember that God in his glory cannot be associated with any human or anything tangible like mosque or stone outcropping or stone pillars that includes one 
almost wants to say especially when they have been declared sacred by humans. So try and sum it up that Allah sees them shifting their face to the heavens. This is where the foolish ask them, have you turned, why have you turned your face from your focal point that you were facing? And we did not make the focal point that you came on except that we may know who is following the messenger from those who will turn on their heels. It was a great thing indeed except for those whom God had guided. Those who have been given the book know it's the truth. So what was the focal point? The Qibla, the focus, direction or general course. And why would they turn on their heels just because of facing a different direction? Did God not guide them because they would not face that direction? Or that their focus or general course was not on the message that the messenger brought? Is this not what this is referring to? What the messenger brought, the Quran? Qibla can only sensibly mean focus, purpose, goal, course or direction that to which one directs one's attention which are acceptable values for the term. You make your own minds up. Now, I come to the juicy part. You claim you've, you know, you've gone back, you've gone, you've left the best hadith in the Quran. You've left the best hadith, and you've gone to hadith that Allah's warned against in the Quran. That came 250 years after the death of the Prophet. So, according to the hadithers and their man-made Zoroastrian, Satanic, Shia, Iranian hadiths, did the, did your Muhammad worship idols? Now you notice your Muhammad because the Muhammad you portray, portray is different to, to the Quran's Muhammad. Muhammad's first revelation. Now you have to get your calculator out and work this one out. Muhammad's first revelation. Muhammad's revelation was an event described in Islam as taking place in 610, during which the Islamic prophet Muhammad was visited by the Archangel Gabriel, known as uh, Jibril, in yeah, known as Jibril. So the Isra and Miraj. The Isra and Miraj are the two parts of a night journey that according to Islam, no, according to the traditionalists, the religionists, yeah, the Islamic prophet Muhammad took during a single night around the year 621. The Qibla. The Qibla is the direction that should be faced when a Muslim prays during Salah. This is from Wikipedia, right? So it's from all the traditionalist and religionist sources. According to the traditional Muslim view, the Qibla in the Islamic prophet Muhammad's time was originally the noble sanctuary in the city of Jerusalem, similar to Judaism. This Qibla was used for over 13 years from 610 until 623 CE, 17 months after Muhammad's 622 CE arrival in Medina. The Qibla became orientated towards the Kaaba in Mecca. According to tra traditional accounts from Muhammad's companions, the change happened very suddenly during the noon prayer in Medina, in a mosque now known as Masjid al Qiblatain, the mosque of the two Qiblas. Muhammad was leading the prayer when he received revelations from God instructing him to take the Kaaba as the Qibla. Finally, uh, he, they turned uh, their faces in the direction of the sacred mosque. According to the traditional accounts contained in the Hadith and Sirah, Muhammad, who had been facing Jerusalem upon receiving this revelation, immediately turned around to face Mecca, and those praying behind him also did so. Now we go on to the conquest of Mecca. The Muslim army set out for Mecca on Wednesday, the 29th of November 629. Volunteers and contingents from allied tribes joined the Muslim army on the way, swelling its size to about 10,000 strong. Then, along with his companions, Muhammad visited the Kaaba. The idols were broken and their gods were destroyed. Thereupon, Muhammad recited the following verse from the Quran Say, the truth has come and the falsehood has gone. Very falsehood is bound to vanish. Chapter 17, verse 81. So, stick with me now. First revelation, 610. Israel and Miraj, 621. Qibla changed from Jerusalem to Mecca 623. The conquest of Mecca, this came about 629 to 630 CE. Keep in mind 632 CE around that time is when the Prophet dies. So the prayers were finalized before the conquest of Mecca roughly eight years. The prayer was finalized two to three years before the change of the Qibla. The Qibla change was five years before the conquest of Mecca. So there's an eight year span between the Miraj 
and the conquest of Mecca. During the conquest of Mecca, Prophet Muhammad visited the Kabul. The idols were broken there. Gods were destroyed. And this is where he recited the verse, chapter 7, verse 81. So, if there's five times a day prayers for eight years had been facing towards the Kaaba, the followers of Muhammad were praying to idols, period. So what are you saying? That Muhammad worshipped idols? This is what you get when you don't use reason and logic. You take your rabbis and scholars as lords besides Allah. They said, how do we do this? He said, did you not agree with what they made halal, what Allah made haram, and haram that Allah made halal? They said, yes. He said, this is how you worship them. Chapter 9, verse 31. Chapter 7, verse 3. Chapter 25, verse 33, 43 to 44. Chapter 98, verse 1. Chapter 98, verse 5. Chapter 17, verse 23 to 24. So I'd like you to use your uh, God-given brain reasoning that you had when you became a Quran alone. Um, one thing I would suggest is that you know we both know that Allah said the Quran is the best, the best hadith. We also know um, that the um, the Quran, right? Um, the Prophet was only following the Quran alone, and so were the companions. Now, you might come with the argument with, well, the same, the way the Quran came to us today is the same way, or from the same people that the hadiths up to the present day and you class that it's a revelation now the one thing you have to understand is that if something is a revelation like the Quran right Allah says he's going to protect the Quran he didn't say he's going to protect Muhammad's sayings and ways the reason being is because Muhammad's ways and sayings was the Quran now we go to your dodgy man-made Zoroastrian satanic hadiths and you've got some of the companions asking Aisha what the character of the Prophet was and she said the walking talking Quran now you might say yeah but brother it needs to go it, you know it never surpasses the Quran it always goes at the same level and we make sure um, it don't go beyond it and it's just to explain it let me explain something to you what if it's at the same level as the Quran then you don't need the hadiths that's number one number two the Quran Allah states that the Quran is fully detailed in chapter 6 verse 114 chapter 7 verse 52 chapter 10 verse 37 chapter 6 verse 119 chapter 7 verse 145 chapter 12 verse 111 chapter 16 verse 44 chapter 16 verse 89 chapter 17 verse 9 uh, verse 12 and that the Quran is clear. Chapter 2, verse 99. Chapter 2, verse 185. Chapter 2, verse 209. Chapter 2, verse 213. Chapter 2, verse 253. Chapter 22, verse 16. Chapter 24, verse 1. Chapter 27, verse 13. Chapter 40, verse 50. Chapter 40, verse 66. Chapter 45, verse 17. Chapter 46, verse 7. Chapter 57, verse 9. And chapter 65, verse 11. And he also said it's complete. In chapter 6 verse 155, chapter 6 verse 154, chapter 41 verse 3, chapter 18 verse 109, and chapter 31 verse 27. And he also said it's easy to understand. In chapter 54 verse 17, chapter 54 verse 40, chapter 64 verse 22, chapter 54 verse 32. And he also says that he is the teacher of the Quran. Not Sheikh Ibn Baz, not Imam Tabari, not Ibn Kathir, not the Saudi University God is the teacher in chapter 96 verse 1 to 5 chapter 55 verse 2 to 3 
we have to understand that in the Quran it states Sunnah to Allah, not Sunnah to Muhammad. Okay? And we do agree that Muhammad says himself that he only follows the Quran in chapter 50 verse 45. Now what you have done, you have created a sect and you've gone into a sect. And that takes you out of the fold of Islam as well. And that explains it in chapter 6 verse 159, chapter 3 verse 103 and chapter 30 verse 32. When God says it's the best hadith, he mentions it in 10 verses in the Quran. Chapter 6 verse 19, verse 38 and verse 114. And there's plenty more verses. He says to hold on to the rope of Allah, the Quran and nothing else. Chapter 3 verse 103. Why didn't he say to hold on to anything else? He says the Quran. Okay? We know that we shouldn't make distinctions amongst the messengers in chapter 2 verse 285. And you have to realise that the Quran is the only miracle and revelation that God gave him in chapter 29 verse 51, chapter 17 verse 59. We have to agree that the Quran is enough chapter 17 verse 46 and you shouldn't have no doubt in the Quran because you doubt in is by going to other sources chapter 6 verse 19 chap chapter 6 verse 19 verse 38 and verse 114 the Quran says it explains itself so why do you need something to explain it when it explains itself it's fully self-explanatory by Tashrif and Tafsir Chapter 18 verse 54 and chapter 25 verse 33. The Quran explains everything for a Muslim which is part of his, which is part of uh, the deen. Chapter 12 verse 111, chapter 16 verse 89 and chapter 17 verse 12. I mean I could go on and on and on and on with this. And as I said, you're probably going to make a a video trying to um, switch it up a bit or switch it round or do whatever stuff that you want to do but I can't see how you could possibly do that after what I have the verses I've gave you you've been duped and this is another thing if chapter 33 verse 21 requires Muhammad's hadith then why would not the verses or the chapter 60 verse 4 to 6 require Abraham's hadith? Which books narrate Abraham's hadith? In fact, what about Gabriel's hadith and Sunnah? So you have to understand you're going into a very deep rabbit hole and also they do class the man-made Zoroastrian hadiths as a second source of law. Allah says his is the only law. They follow idols who decree for their religious laws never authorised by God. Chapter 42 verse 21. And there's also a warning for people that don't listen in chapter 2, verse 6 to 7. You have to understand, I'm not here to attack, I'm here to educate. And I need education myself, I'm not perfect. Like you'll see on some of my videos on my channel. But let me explain to you, you have to wake up. Yeah, It's actually sad to see people go from Quran alone, to Sunni Islam and you know it even tells you yeah that the hypocrites fabricated hadiths and attributed them to the Prophet distorted God's law the people who were described in chapter 6 verse 112 so God's telling you they've done this 
and they're going to do this. And out of their rich Arabic language, why did they name it Hadith and Sunnah that's in the Quran? They should have kept it totally away from it because there's corruption there. It's, it's completely obvious. And Allah tells you about them and warns you against them. And also Allah tells you he doesn't forget. And that his words, if he's if the trees, if all the trees repent and the ink of the ocean it, it, it was run out for the words of your Lord. And I'm paraphrasing that. But he said the Quran is enough. What he gave you is enough. Why are you seeking or why are the Hadithas seeking for anything more than what Allah's gave them? I don't understand. <clears throat> On top of that, he said it's clear, fully detailed, easy to understand. He'll teach it to you. And you don't need to learn Arabic. Yeah? You can get that one before you start throwing that one in as well. Read chapter 14, verse... Uh, chapter 4, verse... Wait. Chapter 14, verse 4. Right? Chapter 14, verse 4. It says... And we sent a messenger only in the tongue of his people, that he might make plain to them, God sends astray whom he wills and guides whom he wills. And he is the mighty, the wise. Well, he sent the messenger to the tongue of his people, where well, he's dead. And my tongue of my people is English. So, who's the messenger for me? The one that delivers the message in the language that I know. Okay? So you need to get out of this, they're going to brainwash you, yeah, and then they're going to leave you on the sideline. So anyway, as I said, this is not an attack, it's just some friendly advice, but you need to stop what you're doing, because you're falling deeper, and you ain't going to get out. You said in part of your video that you, um, oh, I forget that, but... You need to know and you need to understand a little bit deeper into what you're talking about. And I don't claim I know everything, but I've tried my best to explain it to you. If you don't listen, only God guides. And uh, yeah, if this obviously keeps going on and you know, you make a video, I'm just gonna make a video and you're gonna, make, and it's gonna go on until one of us flops and I ain't gonna flop because I'm upon the truth. Yeah, the truth will prevail, inshallah. So as I said, just stop do, stop what you're doing and uh, reconsider what you take, what you, um, you know, what you say. But other than that, peace.